Hello and welcome back to Let's Play The Lord of Nothing with me, Ragadon. Let's take a look at our newest companion, Penta. She is a Numerian companion. Penta's extended integration into human society has provided her with a unique trait. Her bard spells and abilities use her intelligence score instead of her charisma score as the key spellcasting ability score. In addition, she gains a plus one racial bonus to intelligence. And she gets plus two for being an android. And plus two to dexterity. Neat. And some decent gear. So all of our characters are currently affected by Forbiddance. This area is sealed against planar travel, be it by means of teleportation, plane shifting, or traversing the astral or the ethereal plane. Forbiddance cannot be dispelled and persists until all frozen gates are destroyed. She has decent skills across the board as a bard class. Already read that. She's an atheist. Point blank shot. Get a plus one bonus on attack and damage rolls with ranged weapons at ranges of up to 30 feet. Spell Penetration. Your spells break through spell resistance more easily than most. You get a plus two bonus on caster level checks, 1d20 plus caster level, made to overcome a creature's spell resistance. Extra Performance. You can use Bardic Performance for six additional rounds per day. Bard proficiencies, she is proficient in light armor, simple weapons, and shields. She has access to cantrips. Inspire courage. A first level bard can use his performance to inspire courage in his allies, including himself, bolstering them against fear and improving their combat abilities. To be affected, an ally must be able to perceive the bard's performance. An affected ally receives a plus one morale bonus on saving throws against charm and fear effects, and a plus one competence bonus on attack and weapon damage rolls. At fifth level, and every six bard levels thereafter, this bonus increases by plus one to a maximum of plus four at 17th level. Okay. Down to the land. A Thundercaller gains a bonus equal to half her level on lore nature checks. Weapon focus heavy crossbow, so she gets a plus one to attack with heavy crossbows. Well versed. At second level, the bard becomes resistant to the bardic performance of others, and to sonic effects in general. The bard gains a plus four bonus on saving throws made against bardic performance and sonic effects. Thundercall. At third level, the Thundercaller can use her performance to unleash a deafening peal of thunder, blasting an area in a 10-foot range with a tremendous cacophony. Every creature in the area takes 1d8 points of sonic damage and must succeed at a fortitude save to avoid being stunned for one round. Creatures that cannot hear are not stunned but are still damaged. At seventh level, the sonic damage that is dealt by this blast of sound increases to 3d8. This damage further increases to 5d8 at 11th level, 7d8 at 15th level, and 98 at 19th level. So it gets pretty good. Uh, the first upgrade to Inspire Courage, so now it's a plus two bonus. Lore Master. At fifth level, the Bard becomes a Master of Lore and can take 10 on any knowledge or lore skill check that he has ranks in. A Bard can choose not to take 10 and can instead roll normally. Level six, Precise Shot. Can shoot or throw ranged weapons at an opponent engaged in melee without taking the standard minus four penalty on your attack roll. And fascinate. At sixth level, a bard can use his performance to cause one or more creatures to become fascinated with him. Each creature to be fascinated must be within 30 feet. Each creature within range receives a will save DC 10 plus half the bard's level plus the bard's charisma modifier to negate the effect. If a creature saving throw succeeds, the bard cannot attempt to fascinate that creature again for 24 hours. If its saving throw fails, the creature stands quietly and observes the performance for as long as the bard continues to maintain it. Any damage to the target automatically breaks the effect. 
Oh, neat. Let me take some notes. All right, let's clear this out. The mess to look at. I put inspire courage on the front. Uh, fascinate up here as well. Is she also a scald? Hold on, did I not scroll down? Oh yeah, look at that. There's more stuff. Alright, so the Numerian Companion also gets Entangle at level 1. Web at level 4. Oh cool, a bunch of crowd control spells at the bottom. Well, that's handy. Alright, well she also has access to Incite Rage enemies. You can also Incite Rage on allies. At 6th level, the Thundercaller can induce a Furious Rage in all enemies within 30 feet. Alright, so it is a Thundercaller ability. I've never played a Thundercaller. Uh, Scalds can also enrage their allies, so... Anyway. Uh, this effect functions as the Rage spell and lasts as long as the target can hear the Thundercaller's performance. Unwilling creatures can be affected if they fail a will save. DC 10 plus half the Thundercaller's level, plus the Thundercaller's Charisma modifier. Success renders the target immune to this power for 24 hours. The Th Thundercaller cannot target herself with this ability. Each affected creature gains a plus 2 morale bonus to strength and constitution, a plus 1 morale bonus on will saves, a minus 2 penalty to AC, and cannot cast spells. Well, neat. I'll protect you from all harm. We'll turn this off on Sentry. So if she uses that, everyone else will get buffed because they don't cast spells anyway. What are we doing now? But as an ally, he can opt out of it. So you can continue casting right. spells because now the bonuses what? don't really help him. I'll probably never use this, but we'll keep it on hand just in case. Alright, she has access to Daze, Dismiss Spell, Flare, Light, Lullaby, and Resistance. Oh, Cure Light Wounds will be handy. Your Piercing Scream, Entangle, Remove Fear is always good. An Unbreakable Heart. Your moderate wounds, delay poison, heroism, scare, and web. Alright, cool. More spells. Always welcome. Expedition boots, some healing, gold, and treasure. These boots grant the wearer a plus 10 competence bonus on athletic skill checks and a plus 5 competence bonus on mobility skill checks. Arth will get those. The bodies of humanoids who froze to death lie in the puddle of meltwater. A flamboyant hat. A scroll of ice storm and some gold. And some treasure, of course. Alright, flamboyant hat. This hat grants its wearer a plus two enhancement bonus to charisma ability score. If the wearer has the bardic performance ability, it allows the wearer to use it for two additional rounds per day. Well, I think we know who's getting that. I'm gone. Some more treasure. Hail! The Wounded Angel salutes you. And hail to you as well. Alright, let's go grab all this loot that we left behind. Report to success. Sharp blocks of ice rise from the thickest of demonic plants, a natural and alien even to this place. It is clear they were created by powerful magic. Ooh, hot armor plus one. That might come in handy. Some 
Jade. And medium encumbrance for the party. Follow my steps. These guys are going to attack us, as we saw before. I serve the Crusades. Strange we can't just sit here and do nothing. The road awaits. I'm right here, where you left me. Who they're dealing with. Die! I am about to rearrange your face. Oh, whoops. Don't waste that, buddy. Away, you brigand! I'll stop you! I'm done with you! Let's hear you cry! What was the perception check? Is it... For the enemies we're defeating to get more information? That's usually a lore nature check. Unless they changed it. Let's head out. Well, I don't see any loot on the map, so I think we're in the clear. Tread lightly. We do have a second crystal. Or a shard. The Verdant Caves. I'm gone. What would you do without me? The ritual site is encircled in eerie pillars made of stacked stones. Giants have been building their fanes like this since time immemorial. No longer because they're all dead. Alright, let's go to the tavern. I quick save beforehand in case it's under attack. I'm pretty sure we warped out as it was under... As the uh, defense of the Defender's Heart started. Follow my steps. Hello. Tenju's hands are curled around a massive mug of fragrant cocoa. Cocoa. Hmm. Truly, I can feel my strength returning with every sip. What do you think about our expedition? In all honesty, you know... Never in my life have I been so afraid. I used to think that after all my travels, scrapes, and adventures, nothing could scare me. I thought myself fearless, as if I could overcome anything. And it turns out that I just hadn't ever seen anything truly scary. Shivering as if from a sudden gust of icy wind, Sanji holds his frost-cracked hands closer to the fireplace. The four is really just strolls and jaunts. Besides, there wasn't really anything at stake. Well, some curiosity, a handful or so of treasure, and just one life, my own. At worst, I risk breaking my neck, you see? 
And now, if we fail, a wicked demon is going to come crawling out of the abyss, and who knows what havoc it will wreak. The gnome sighs. Faced with this massive responsibility, I feel horribly small. Tell me about yourself. Truly, we should have done this long ago. We face so much together, and yet know nothing about each other. Well, what do you like me to tell you about? Where are you from? From the Alabastrian Peaks. Now, I already know what you're going to say. Hold on, Sendry. How can that be? Those are awfully sheer mountains far, far up north. Surely nobody lives there. The gnome smiles proudly. And you'd be right. Nobody does. And yet I really was born there. I swear it on the ripped tent cloth I was swaddled in. My parents were real romantics. They decided to have their honeymoon at the crown of the world and dreamed of making it to the North Pole. But they only got as far as the Alabastrian Peaks. Then I was born, and they had to turn back. After that, well, we wandered together here and there, from Erisin to Katapesh, until I grew up and I started traveling alone. All in all, you could say that adventuring is in my blood. I haven't heard from them in a long time. I hope they ended up achieving their dream of making it to the Pole. Where have your travels taken you? With my parents, why, all over the place. And once I started venturing out on my own, I mainly wandered up and around the mountains in northern Avistan. The Kodar Ridge, the realm of the Mammoth Lords. It was all practice so that I could one day set out to the crown of the world, the Alabastrian Peaks and further to the Pole. I haven't quite got up to that part yet. If I make it out of this mess alive, I'm absolutely heading there as soon as I can. But what are some mountains compared to the Abyss itself? Did you use magic before your encounter with Sithud's Soul Shard? Yes, I've had it since I was a child. My parents used to tell me about how they had taken shelter from a storm when I was born, in gigantic ruins covered with base reliefs. Maybe that's where my gift comes from. As far as I know, I'm the only spellcaster in the family. I wish I could see those ruins for myself, even just a glimpse. It's a shame my parents didn't think to make a few sketches or rubbings of those base reliefs. What if I looked at them and suddenly understood something very, very, very important? About me, about the whole world, about the whole universe. Thank you for your answers. You're very welcome. What do you think of our squad? I think... Wouldn't it have been wonderful if we'd met in a more peaceful time? One with no demons, invasions, ancient horrors. We could have gone on a trip. It doesn't matter where or how. A journey up the mountains, or a river cruise in a boat. Anywhere is perfect with friends, even if some of those friends are always grumbling. What do you think of Rikarth? He's a gruff one, never satisfied, always grumbling at everyone. But I can see that deep down, he's actually noble and kind-hearted. A true crusader, more so than some of the knights I've met. It's just that life has been cruel to him, so he defends himself as best he can. What do you think of Penta? It's rare to meet a pro like her. However, many mountains I've climbed, I'll always be an amateur next to her. Sentry closes his fists. And how dare those bandits from the Technic League treat her so awfully. Oh, if only I had met them, someone would definitely have had a bad day. What do you think of me? I think I was awfully lucky to meet you. Sentry gives you a wide smile. With a friend like you, even the Abyss doesn't scare me. Together, we'll be anyone. I know it. Thank you for your answers. I have no secrets. It's an odd response. The angel also had a similar response when we said thanks for answering my questions. What do you think of Sithud's soul shards? Shard souls. Nasty, vile, and wretched, as you yourself know. I'm ashamed to remember how happy I was to have this power at first. Who could have guessed it would be such a curse? I can't wait to be rid of them. I have to go. Yes, it's time to hit the road. Wait for us, a wonderful tavern. May your cellars always brim with cocoa and wine. Let's head out. I have a few people to speak to. Let's focus on the companions for now, and we'll probably speak to everyone else next time. I don't recognize Venrad. 
from the main campaign. Some of the other names are familiar, like Anai. Well, she's from the, uh... Oh, is Venerat from the first half of the expansion? Anai is. But the other survivors that we rescued. What do you want? A tall man looks up from her notebook. Wow, it's Sister Charisma, safe and sound, and behind a bar table, not behind bars. And here, I thought I'd never see you again. The rumors that you died or fled the city. Rumors are like weeds. They are not sown. They are not reaped. They just spring up all over the place on their own. Who are you? I'm called Charisma. I'm a practitioner of... Mm, various crafts. I used to own a laundry, and now I own a construction firm. Laundry, right. McCarth chuckles. I remember your portrait plastered on every other post in the city. I just can't quite recall what was written underneath. It must have been advertisements for your firm. I don't know what you're talking about. In any case, that's all in the past. You know, those horrible demons burned so much when they attacked the city. Charisma smiles sweetly, like a well-fed cat. Guard records, court archives, bank books. So much was lost that I fear we'll never know what was written on those portraits, if they even existed at all. Clever. That means Charisma is now an upstanding citizen in the eyes of the law. I wonder how long that will last. How did you meet each other? I used to work for her, doing various jobs a long time ago in another life. If you're a smarter corkscrew, you could have been my right hand. But no, you left your family to join the do-gooders. Don't worry, I know you didn't rat us out, and I have no quarrel with you. But what did you get in return for your service for the Crusaders? Bugger all. Was it worth it? It was, sister. Ricarth looks into Charisma's eyes for a long time. Eventually, she looks away. Alright, live your life. It's your choice. I see you took the best spot in the tavern. And why not? I can afford it. The tavern is an excellent place to conduct business, much better than some dusty shop. I have no one to hide from and nothing to fear. Whoever has business with me knows where to find me. During the siege, this exact spot was where Erebeth set up her headquarters. And now they're my headquarters. The do-gooders left to fight and safe travels to them. This table will now serve us. Alright, Corkscrew. It's been nice chatting with you. I'm a busy person. If you have business, lay it on the table. If not, be on your way. As a matter of fact, I do have business. Can you scrounge up some gear for us? Nothing dangerous or forbidden. Just stuff you used to be able to buy from the shops. But the city isn't a great place for shopping nowadays. Ricarth writes something on a piece of paper hands it to Charisma. Here, can you find it? Hmm, this one, no problem. You can't find this now, but I will look. I might have some left in storage. Don't even bother asking for this one. The Crusaders took all of it. And what's this? Where am I supposed to find something like that? Charisma scratches the bridge of her nose and slips her Karth's paper into her notebook. I'll get you what I can. Payment and cash only. You wound me. Have I ever asked for credit? Well, still long. Tell me about yourself. What do you care? Are you from the guard? I'm a businesswoman. I accept gold in exchange for goods, and that's all you need to know. Well, why do you call Rakarth Corkscrew? That's what everyone called him back in the day. Now he'd prefer to forget it. I don't like when people forget who they are and where they came from. Show me your wares. It's everything that I've managed to get. That's some pretty good stuff here.
Well, that's one scroll of Ray's dead for us. The scimitar is probably worth grabbing. I give that to Valmont. Can't quite afford any of these. I could sell more stuff and grab one for Rakarth. And it'd probably be worth it, especially one of the flaming ones. Well, I say that. I don't know where these portals are going to take us. Obviously, where we just were, we're fighting a bunch of cold-based enemies. But since I was able to grab cold, uh, that cold uh, damage upgrade using the ice shard, I'm assuming we'll fight something other than ice-based enemies elsewhere. But it could just be that it's thematic because everything is is ice based and that's all we'll be facing. Uh, something like this would also be worth it, but again, we can't afford it. Uh, let's see if Balmont wants this. It's the same thing. Hmm. Well, let's do this. All right, guess we'll use that elsewhere. They all say the same thing. Oh, not that guy. Alright, Venred? Ah, you're alive. Sergeant Venred, you met in the caves under Canabras, salutes you with the beer mug. Never thought I'd see you again. To tell you the truth, wasn't sure I'd make it out of that bloodshed alive either. Miracle it is. How are you? Oh, that's right, this is the guy we recruited our companions from. Uh, not Sendry and Rakarth, but all the mercenary companions. After we took the city back, it took a while for the brass to decide what to do with me. Some wanted to reward me for saving the soldiers, others to condemn me for cowardice. In the end, it was the queen herself who made the decision, bless her. For demonstrating great discretion and prudence, I was to be promoted. Didn't think I was right for the front, though. Other qualities are needed in the field, she said. Captain Venrad was to stay behind in Canabras, dealing with paperwork and gathering reinforcements. It is what it is. Venrad takes a swig. Promotion, sort of. But nothing to boast about. Anyhow, can't complain. Could have been court-martialed instead. My party could do with a skilled fighter. Know anyone? Sure. Plenty of those in Canabras. Some looking for gold, some for fame, uh, some for a new start. Mind you, they won't work for free. They take two and a half thousand each, up front. Alright, well, good luck, see you later. No one can beat us. Let us be careful. I'm guessing Rakarth went outside. And I, sing a song, my little songbird, for those who fought and those we've lost. Healer and I sit at a table piled with empty bottles, singing a mournful song. It takes her a moment to focus her gaze on you and remember who you are. Oh, you survived after all. That's good. You keep it up. Well, don't just stand there like a fool. Take a seat. Let's raise a glass to those who weren't so lucky. <laughs> Care to remind me who you are? Forgot me already, huh? You must drink even more heavily than I do. Names and I. I'm a healer. If not for you and your help, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. She raises her mug. 
A toast to you. Long live... Sorry, live long. Be well. How often do you get drunk like this? Every week. It's been getting better lately, though. Used to drink myself blind every day. What else could I do? She gives a loud belch and takes another swig. I used to think I was too old to be surprised by anything. I'd seen hellfire burns, smelled ulcers that'd make you vomit, patched up every single wound a human body can bear. Then the demons came, and the victims flooded to my door, seeking help. That's when I realized I hadn't seen anything yet. Not a darn thing. Do you understand? I... I... And I shakes her head, tears welling in her eyes. I could never have imagined what they could do to a living body. People twisted and broken in the most unnatural ways, yet still somehow alive. They ask me why I didn't join the Crusaders. I tell them that someone had to stay behind and watch over the local nitwits. For you, though, the truth. I was scared. No, not of demons, where the abyss swallow them. I was scared of what they do to folks. Here, I'm just an old drunk. There, I'd have been an old drunk and crazy to boot. Let's raise our mugs to the fallen. Ooh, two potions of aid, a potion of... I'm oh, sorry, three uh, potions of cure moderate wounds, and a potion of good hope. To the dearly departed, you and I both raise your mugs and drink. Oh, there were so many, all dead now. But you, you're still kicking. I was so sure you'd passed. Now don't you dare die, you hear me? Look, take this. Take it, I say. Don't make me worry about you more than I have to. God's willing, you won't need it. I should go. Hey, you be safe out there. Don't die. If you do, don't haunt me in my dreams. A oh, real quick. All she has right now. Okay. Oh, there he is. I did walk past him. I was afraid of that. Alright, I'm gonna call it here for now. Next time we'll speak with Rakarth and Penta. We'll explore outside. We'll also speak with Gemmo Hawks. I'm guessing the other survivors we rescued in the first half of the expansion are outside. Or we'll run across them later. Alright, I'm happy Our with that. Calls. And I'm going to call it here for now. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.